What is up everybody, it's your boy Disability Dan, and today we're playing with gasoline. Except not. On a more serious note, um, in today's video, I really just wanted to talk a little bit about things. What's going on, There's some updates on severe weather concerning everybody um, in the U.S. Even though probably two people are going to see this, you might as well know. But, um... First things first, one thing I've noticed recently in the gaming community is that a lot of people, um, like, let me just tell you real quick, Modern Warfare and Mastered, I, I love that game, right? Probably, I'm, I'm spent the most time on it, I have about 290 hours on that game, way, way too much, okay, way too much. Um, one of the things I've noticed is a lot of people like to take it way too seriously, okay? Um, nobody likes to just have stupid fun with it, you know? Like, that's one of the reasons I love it so much is because they give you options to have fun. And I used to think these dumb camos were kind of retarded, but you know, more recently I've realized that it's just, you know, it's just a game. It's not anything about real life or anything. That's why in Modern Warfare Mastered, um, on the Baird Mark 8, my personal uh, favorite SM or LMG, it's not an SMG, but uh, that's why on that, whenever I play with it, I uh, I put on the candy corn camo in the Elder Kit. I like making fun of crap, okay? I like just having fun, having a ridiculous time. That's why in Search and Destroy, when I was just playing that recently, I decided to make a stupid class with the scorpion, and I got 16 kills with it, because the scorpion is actually OP, kind of. You just gotta have fun with things like that, and people take these things way too seriously. Um, that's just my opinion, though. But on the, uh, on the more important note, uh, today, as, which is, as of today, um, there has been somewhat of a tornado outbreak within the past two days. Uh, today is April uh, 14th. Um, yesterday was the 13th. Um, and yesterday there were nine confirmed tornadoes and there were, so far today there's three confirmed tornadoes. There's actually a tornado warning right now that I've been keeping a pretty uh, steady look on. Um, I don't know what's going on with it right now. Actually, I haven't looked at it in a little while, which is why I'm slowing down. But, um, the storm strengthening, there's a fairly large hail core heading for where I live right now, but um, next week for anybody, um, I don't know if this is not confirmed, it's not anything like, um, I, I don't really know for sure about this, okay, I don't know for sure about this, but um, uh, next week on the SPC, if you go to, if you just type in SPC, um, find the Storm Prediction Center. If you go to their website and go to the Convective Outlooks, you're going to see Day 4, Day 5, and Day 6, as of right now, are severe um, severe potential. And those are all tracking throughout the country, slowly going in a more northeast direction. Um, and the main, the main reason I'm talking about that is because, I, mean, I don't know about you, but... Uh, Back in 2011, I do remember the, uh, I don't remember personally, but I remember seeing a lot of stuff about the, uh, super outbreak in 2011 of tornadoes, um, and I can imagine on the SPC website they had severe potential for severe weather, uh, tracking throughout several different locations throughout the country, like large locations. These are a lot of tornadoes in large areas in the super outbreak. Um, this is covering a pretty large area. There's already 30% severe potential on day four, which is um, Wednesday. So basically, if there's a 5% chance of a tornado on the SPC website, that means there's probably going to be some type of tornado, maybe weak, maybe strong. Nobody really knows, but if there's a 15% chance, that's, that's almost guaranteed a small tornado. If there's anything above that, it's guaranteed a tornado. And if it gets to hash marks and like 45% chance, then that's probably a significant tornado. And um, 
one of the things about that is there's already 30% chances four days in advance. That is not something that is common and that is something that most people will probably ignore, probably won't know about it, which is why I'm telling everyone about this because that this is some pretty severe potential right here. If this is another outbreak of tornadoes, this could mean a lot of danger. And then and going more into the storm related topic, one thing that I cannot stand and I know a lot, I know a lot of people always say when there's tornado warnings that there's there's a lot of tornado warnings where they live they never get anything which is why they typically ignore them don't ever ignore a tornado warning don't do it that is that is not smart i'm not trying to insult anybody if you have but that, just don't do it okay one of the reasons why so many people died in the indiana tornado outbreak of was it, 1976 on sunday um one of the reasons so many people died in that outbreak is because they get outbreak or, or they get warnings all the time and everybody is just like okay we'll ignore this because it doesn't really matter but one of the things is that also happened with the uh, tri-state tornado back in 1925 that tornado killed 695 people and everyone ignored this shit for the most part of the but then again they didn't really have warnings but anybody that had a radio and there was um you know, like severe weather uh, warnings. I don't really know how the warning systems worked back then, but um, even even today, most of the people that die from these tornadoes ignore the warning. It's proven fact. A lot of people ignore warnings, and that's what causes a lot of people shock. Because if you really think about it, if you're warned that there is a, in fact, a tornado there. You're not going to be shocked when there's a big tornado that comes right at your house and that could potentially harm you. You have to take these things seriously, regardless of where you live. Because again, the people in Indiana, they, they, they didn't have many tornadoes there. They hadn't had one in a long time. They never thought about it. And then I believe something around 40 people ended up dying because they were they didn't think anything was going to happen of it. Um, you just, just keep an eye out on that. If you get a warning. Um, from Wednesday to Friday, make make sure you pay attention to that warning, okay? It's um it's gonna be in the Midwest, uh, main storm, really tornado alley, um, Oklahoma north and south, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas areas. Then it's gonna move uh it's gonna start moving east towards Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee, all those areas. And then on, on Friday it's gonna be finally in uh, the east coast, um, including South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, all those places. So just um, make sure you pay attention to that, okay, because a lot of people get warned about this crap, and again, a lot of, a lot of people also think that nothing ever bad, nothing bad is ever going to happen to them, okay, and that they're just, they're going to live a nice life, and a lot of, that's a lot of people's dreams, right? A lot of people want to live in this life. A lot of people don't want their house to be completely destroyed by any of life. But sometimes that's the way it works. Especially you, if you live in more Oklahoma. If, you, if anybody has ever lived there or lives there now. Please take warning seriously. And if you weren't there to experience the, the events of 2013 and 1999. Consider yourself lucky. And uh, try to stay safe during that because... A lot of bad crap happens in more, okay? So that's really uh, that's really the second topic that I wanted to really talk about today. Um, so because I, I thought of it as a problem, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people ignore these warnings, and I get it. It happens all the time. You might get scared the first few times, but after that, you got to take the warnings seriously. If there were warnings for a reason. Warnings mean somebody. A professional storm spotter typically has sighted a mesocyclone. A mesocyclone means heavy vertical rotational winds. And that means good potential for tornadoes, okay? So I'm not like an expert in this, okay? But just take them seriously. That's what experts are trying to help you do. They're trying to get you better earlier warnings on this stuff. And if everybody keeps ignoring them, what's the point? Um, that's really, that's really all I wanted to talk about, um, 
It's already been like a good 14 minutes. Um, anything else I wanted to talk about? Maybe some more gaming community problems? I don't know. Um, I mean, right now I'm fine. But in uh, other other news, there's um, in the English Premier League, there's a good title race between Liverpool and Manchester City. Um, I was watching the Chelsea Liverpool game today. Phenomenal game. Chelsea played well. They had several good opportunities. They just couldn't take advantage of them. But Liverpool, they played very well. And uh, Mohamed Salah, he. Oh my goodness, I've watched, I don't know, maybe 30 replays of that today. That was just, that's ridiculous. And the thing about me is I watch soccer a lot, right? Or football, but anybody in America calls it soccer. And everybody's always like, wow, it's soccer stupid. And I'm like, you're retarded. But, um, I lost my train of thought there. Um, but I watch soccer a lot, right? And every time somebody scores a good goal... Like, uh, I'm a, I'm a huge Leicester fan. You'd have to be blind or deaf to not know that. But I'm a huge Leicester fan. And um, a couple weeks ago when Leicester played Huddersfield Town, they they won 4-1. One of the goals was by a new uh, baloney, uh, Yori Kielman, and he scored from outside the box. So. Well, every time someone scores a good goal, I always miss it. When Tielemann scored that goal, I had watched the entire game up to that point. I went to go put eggs on my plate. As soon as I turned around to put the eggs on my plate, my dad was like, Oh, hey, Tielemann's just scored. And I was like, I hate everything. And then Salah scores his goal from, I don't know, 25, 20 yards out. Outside of the box, that's all I know. Left foot, beauty, straight into the upper 90 on the left side. Kepa had no chance of saving that one. But that was a phenomenal goal, I and mean, you have to be supposed to deny that. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting situation right now with uh, Liverpool and Manchester City, both very good teams. Manchester City always plays well, though. Liverpool, um, is, I, I don't know, they've been so close multiple times, and you know they keep, they always slip up, and you know what happens to them, like 2013-14. Um, they were playing Crystal Palace. They were up 3-0 at half. That probably would have given them enough points to win the Premier League. But within, I think, 12 minutes, or, yeah, within 12 minutes, Crystal Palace scored three goals to tie the game back up. And Liverpool ended up losing the game. And it, it was devastating to my brother and my dad. They are the hardcore Liverpool fans. And, uh, and, I mean, Liverpool is a good team. They have good stories behind it. Um, one of the, uh, uh, one of the main reasons my brother's a Liverpool fan is because a few years ago, he was very sick. He had, um, I don't remember which time exactly it was in, but he already liked Liverpool because my dad liked Liverpool. And, um, the thing was, he, um, so he was really sick, right? And one day, oh my goodness, sorry, I can't remember how to do this right now. Um, turn shot, hold. What? God, how do you use this, dude? Um. No. Oh, my goodness. But, uh. Yeah, my brother, he was very sick, and his coach in high school at the time, um got him tickets to go see a Liverpool game but the thing is he tried to do it anonymously but we all know who it really was and um uh wow I'm so bad at this um one of the 
it was what the heck is Sky Striker? Um, but uh, they so what happened was we found an envelope on our car it said you'll never walk alone on it which is Liverpool's motto and my brother um, looked inside and there were tickets to see a Liverpool game and that was kind of that was crazy for him nobody really given him anything like that before. So they went to the game and they found his coach sitting in the row behind him. So that's how they really knew. But um it's just a really good story and ever since then Liverpool's meant so much more to him than just the, the soccer team. And they've like been there for him really. Um that's one of the cool things about that. And then Leicester I just got into soccer within the past year, right? So I'm legit. I'm so confused, man. Why don't they put that? What? I'm pressing every. Oh, up around the D-pad. Okay, I see. But um. Liverpool's been there with Leicester and um, last year I really you know I liked them after the underdog story and stuff and then I just I started liking them even more and then last year it just kind of blew up I'm a pretty hardcore fan and as I'll tell you what this season has been pretty pretty subpar I guess um, and it's still been a good season though I don't I don't know how Leicester's still seventh but uh Pod 12 at the beginning of the season. I don't know what was going on with him, but he could not do anything right. And um, after we, uh, after the Foxes got Brendan Rodgers as the boss, everything started turning up then. Which is good. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the, really it. I don't really have anything else to say. Just, uh, just wanted to warn everyone about the severe weather potential on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then talk about some issues in the gaming community. So, I guess that'll be the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed it. Um, hoping to get Days Gone. Um, if I can get that, I'm definitely gonna make a YouTube series on it. So. Uh, Guess that's it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.